Here's a little outline on how this video is going to start. We're going to start by picking a gene. Then we're going to find that specific gene's sequence. And then we're going to throw in finding a gene from if you just have a sequence. Then we're going to move on to actually coding in Python. We're going to set up our genome reference file where, where we're going to find that gene in. Then we're going to use what we set up to take our gene sequence and find where it's located in the FASTA file. And then using the codon region, we're going to just separate the pieces of the gene that actually code the protein. So now that the boring part's over, let's go ahead and start selecting our gene. Now you can really pick whatever gene you want. I suggest something a little popular to start off with so you know you're going to be finding it and just have fun with it. So here we go. Let's go ahead and pick one. Big money, big money, big money. Come on. Jackpot. Starting out by giving a shout out to the online Mendelian Inheritance and Man website, also known as OMM, which is just a great genetic reference. If you haven't used it yet, give it a shot. Now, here we go. We're going to go ahead and type HGD because we already know the gene that we're looking for. And what this website is going to do is it's going to give us all the information we could want about HGD. Uh, it won't give us the actual reference sequence, but there will be links and ways to get to the reference sequence from this website. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here on homogentisate 1,2-dioxygenase. And basically one of the main things we're going to look for here is that there is a gene phenotype relationship with alcaptonuria. And really this is why this gene was selected, because alcaptonuria is like uh, this historic find in the genetics world and really it starts up a lot of genetics textbooks uh, start with the discovery of this when it yeah, after chapter 3 you know after all the basics get covered and what alcaptonuria is where an individual will have dark urine or urine that is considered black this rare genetic disorder is caused by a homozygous or compound heterozygous mutation in the homogenesate 1,2 dioxinogase gene. So it's important to find the gene and then make sure that all those base pairs read properly. Which brings us to the next piece of important information on this page which is the location. So the location is 3q13 which is going to be on the long arm of chromosome number 3. That's where this gene's located. Now let's take a look at Alcaptonuria. What I would suggest is opening up a new tab and searching for Alcaptonuria on the OMM website. And I'm going to go ahead and flip over to that page now. Now we have the Alcaptonuria symbol, which is AKU. And if you look at the phenotype gene relationships location, it's still going to have the same location for Alcaptonuria listed. Then if you look a little lower in the description, you'll see that alcaptonuria is an autosomal recessive metabolic disorder. This means you would need two AKU alleles to cause alcaptonuria's phenotypic response of darker urine. There really is just a lot of great information on these OMM web pages, so you can go ahead and read through it. I would highly encourage it on whatever gene you selected or whatever you're into. But I'm going to go ahead and start showing us how to find the gene sequence now. Starting with navigating to the NCBI website uh, and then going on the left hand side through their links. The uh, genes and expression link is what we're looking for and we're going to go ahead and click on that. Then going over to the gene link uh, to search the gene database on NCBI. When we're on the gene link we'll be typing in just right into the top search bar HGD and what that will do is after we hit search it'll give us all the information all the genes that are linked to the letters HGD 
and as we can see here on that first link this is the one that we're looking for it matches the information uh, in OMM it has the same OMM number uh, it has the same alias as we were looking for we already knew that it was on chromosome 3 so we're gonna go ahead and click on that one now this page right here that it links to is all the information about HGD which is a lot and it's a page that you can scroll down or on the right hand side there's a link just to shoot you right down to the page then we can go ahead and click on the fast day format just to see the reference sequence in the fast day format now right here is where it is kind of funny because the first 5,000 base pairs are just not actually part of the gene that's upstream 5,000 so fi the gene actually starts at 5,001 and they show you an extra 5,000 in front which is why the gene region is already set to 4,911 so keep that in mind just in case you use a different gene than HGD when you look up a gene sequence on and the NCBI website they give you 5,000 extra upstream and 2,000 downstream just for more information because we love that extra data that's uh, what it's all about so next this is how you would download uh, the fast A sequence if you wanted that genes fast A sequence the whole thing you would drop the send to down and put a radio selection in the file and then you can go ahead and create file and it'll just download this fast day sequence to your computer through the browser and then we're going to click on the gen bank info and this is this is really the best uh, tool in my opinion because you what you're going to do is there's it gives you all the exon regions of this gene and then it gives you a really important region which is the cds region and this is actually the coteen the coteen what am I talking about? This is the protein coding region. So it's the important region. And if you scroll down more, it'll give you basically the fast A file again. Uh, this one's going to be in lowercase. The other one's in uppercase, but at least this one gives you like a nice little reference numbers on the left hand side. So back to this CDS region. Uh, it gives you the translation protein so you can check, uh, make sure that your area that you're that you found is, is coding the same the same proteins so now real quick just to cover it a uh, blast search if you have just the sequence and you don't know what gene it belongs to you can always run a blast by going to the NCBI website forward slash blast and clicking on nucleotide blast and copy and pasting your sequence in there sometimes you might think that you're in the right area uh, and what you could do is you could copy and paste your nucleotide sequence into a blast search give it a few moments and it should have a result on as far as percentage goes on what it thinks that sequence is related to there's a few results here and our result comes back up I just put the first line of the fast day format in to get that so now we're gonna go ahead and jump into coding in Python Let's start off by downloading the information we need and we actually need a FASTA file to search in and what I'm going to use is the genome reference. So you might have a FASTA file that's not aligned and things might not be making sense but this is just a basic understanding of how to use Python to search and find a gene with the reference sequence. Now this is kind of already done for you in the NCBI uh, website the issue is that it only really uses the genome reference so if you have different files uh, that that would be the importance of knowing how to use Python to search for a gene so let's go ahead and navigate to the right of this gene information screen off NCBI and go to the NCBI reference sequences and this is our gene reference sequence right here for the gene and a little bit lower you're gonna see the GRCH38 uh, primary assembly so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on the FASTA formatted chromosome 3 and we'll just download the FASTA file right from here using that drop down send to I was speaking about earlier and we can just send the FASTA formatted file right to our computer without even having to unzip it and we can go from there here 
So after that file is downloaded, you want to put it into your, your Python folder. And then we're going to use Python to search for this sequence. Now, these, this is where the sequence is located in this file here. But that really doesn't help us with finding it uh, in Python if we didn't know the numbers already. So we're going to forget that those numbers exist and start up Python. With Python open, I pre-typed some information here that you can copy down. I named the chromosome file that I downloaded off that send to to ch3.fasta. And line one, I set up the target file variable to open the file. Then line two, I set a variable read the file uh, or target read target file. Then on line three, I use use tf as a variable. And what this variable does is it takes every single character and splits it, gives it a gap, and then it brings them all together. So it removes the breaking spaces, it removes all the spaces, period, and it'll just read as one line so that when you search for a sequence, if the sequence has any gap in it in the file read, that gap's disappeared and you'll get the right information. Now with that GenBank website open, we're going to go ahead and set the range to the gene so that we know that it's just the gene that we're looking for because the NCBI website does include 5,000 upstream base pairs in their reads for the genes, which is why they kind of already have it set pretty high. And so I'm going to set it to 5,001. And I'm going to scroll down to the CDS region. And this is, to me, this is the more important uh, region because uh, it says these are where the the proteins are coded. So from 700 uh, from 371 to 385 there's a piece an exon that codes a little bit of this protein right here. And then there's from 6619 to 6690 another little piece of the protein, another little piece of the protein and those exon pieces of coding. So if we scroll down to the bottom what we can do is we can go ahead and run a find and see if we can find where this gene starts by putting in the base pairs. Line 5, we're running a dot find on a string that we copy and pasted out of the gene bank information. And the dot upper after the string is just making that string uppercase because our file's in uppercase. So it wouldn't find anything if it wasn't searching for uppercase letters. So dot line 6 then is doing a dot count which is going to tell you how many times that string comes up in the file and then we're using dot count to verify that there was only one time that that string came up in the file and we're using that number that came up and then we're going to add a hundred to that number and then we're going to do a print just between that area and then a hundred more so then you're going to get your sequence from the start of that origin file or that origin string a hundred plus 
and then you can go ahead and compare it to the origin area in the GenBank information to make sure that you're in the right place. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to just find the protein information and what we can do is we can just run a basic script. It takes a little bit more work but you can easily just separate the protein information out by just running some basic lines of coding. Uh, and the importance of this is you can think of any idea. Any idea you can think of you can get the information quicker now and you don't have to be reliant on it if it's in the NCBI website because you could go and you can run the sequence you know how to get the gene information and all you gotta do is make sure that that gene information matches